Wednesday, April the 14th, 2021, I posted uh, Anachronism 3210. It's also called, which the last one was as well, an Anachronism, and it also has at the end of the title an asterisk. I mean, you. I, I post these when I post them out of order, uh, chronologically, even though I'm reading them chronologically uh, per month, they're kind of all wacky out of order. So you would not know the previous poem, probably, to this one in uh, chronology, which was also called Anachronism with an asterisk, and that one was headed. At the end of the poem, uh, I'll read the asterisk to this one, which is not the same you know, thing that the last one said, just so you know. But now that I have had my own place again for these 26 months, that is, it says in, underneath the same thing that the last one did, alternative title, that part was the same. And it is another kind of long narrative thing here, in which I present to you a poem, the introduction of which you should have already received approximately 24 hours hence. The poem is constructed of actual text messages sent early in early on the morning of April 13, 2021, which at the time of this writing is yesterday. Many apologies for my attempts to create a sense of urgency or suspense or to highlight the significance of what was to arrive and now has here today. This poem, which I am posting late on the evening of April 14th, 2021. I never used to give away actual dates in these poems. Despite my enticements of last evening and the latest of 3,210 such pieces, which are part of a whole which I have been building for almost two decades now, 21 years at present, by the way, today in reality is August the 7th, 2023, some uh, two and a half years out uh, from this one, or not quite, two and a third, whatever, something like that. And for almost nearly as long have been regularly posting here via blog, which is what I consider a wonderfully appropriate means by which to present them. Clearly, I was doing what I'm doing with by recording these things at this point in time. Uh, and I'd started recording them, I think, by this point in time. I'm not sure. Around that time. Um, I mean, I have been trying to record them in the past. I'd done this off and on a little bit, but I really kind of did it uh, decidedly about starting about two years ago, something like that. And <clears throat> anyway, and, and have kind of ramped up late, of late trying to get them all out for some reason, just to start, because I've got other things that I want to do in, uh, afterwards. But, uh, again, I'm trying to think in whole of this, like, because, you know, I've just, I've been doing this thing for 21, at this point, 19 years, and 21 years, and I am kind of being, I think, serious for the most part here. Um, sometimes I'm not, you know. It could be down the, you know, I, sometimes I'll it seem like I'm really talking, it's like it's really actually Delray, like it's me, and then I'll, like, toward the, later on in the poem, you know, I'll you'll discover that I'm that the, that the narrator's not at all me, some sort of fictionalized or some other person. It's just, these are things that I'm, you know, making note of as I actually go through all of these, it, it, because I think it does, they do work as a whole quite well. And so anyway, I'll just continue with the poem. <coughs> I always feel like these little anecdotes that I give are kind of like, uh, why would you go, or why would you listen to anyone read their own poetry when you could read it yourself? Usually, because usually people, can, I don't think poets can necessarily usually read their own work fantastically, usually. I mean, I'd, it's just a thing, you know, it's some it's poetry readings to me are more social events than anything else, usually. There are absolute exceptions in which Po the, somebody's po poetry comes completely alive to me when I go to a reading um, because of the way that it's read or presented or performed and um, which is another reason why I think I do read for my I read for my voice I mean I write for my voice and so that's one other reason why I'm sort of recording these because I think I sometimes my voice is a little weird but so is, so is most people I guess so it's most people's voices. Let me get back to the poem.
this poem, which I am posting late on the evening of April 14th, 2021, despite my enticements of last evening, is the last, the latest of 3,210 such pieces, which are part of a whole which I have been building for almost two decades now, and for almost nearly as long, have been regularly posting here via blog, which is what I consider a wonderfully appropriate means by which to present them. The one unique aspect of this poem, of this particular poem, is that the text that follows is given in the manner in which the exchange took place yesterday, and and this is what makes it stand out, maybe, is placed in literal time, noted in the way we normally do. See the dates that appear above. Whether you have just arrived for the first time or come and go with any regularity at all, thank you very much for being here. I was really starting to address you, the reader the receptor a lot. I had been doing that off and on, but more so lately in this particular case. Of course, by now I'm pretty much nothing but a big red herring. Feeling an emptiness of a sort and having a desire to fill that void, uh, but without really wondering about it much at first, I text the following to Marvin. Quote, I wonder if you've read any of what I've been writing of late, end quote. I've been thinking it has become a burden uh, so many years of not having any real reaction and real-time engagement of any kind, how important that has always been to me, or in more practical terms, how it was something that had always been there for me. I mean, I was pretty aggressive in making it happen year upon year upon year. But now, just how there is this somewhat troubling cloud stirring in me for a long time, and this morning it just dawned on me. Duh, of course. This goes alongside a lot of this disengagement black hole that has been such a huge thing in my life since a bit before I was evicted. But I am only this morning even thinking about the performance and engagement side of art that totally disappeared and has been gone now for over a half dozen years. It's nice to suddenly get hit by this realization. Of course, it creates an echo chamber and makes everything seem too damn... I'm gonna use an academic metaphor here. On an instant. So now that that is clear, <laughs> as if, it ought to be a priority of mine to fix that problem. And in knowing it has been a severe, as I now realize it has been, and that I miss that very much, and having it be so easy to think of this as some worthwhile process, too. So here's that. So there's that. It ought to be something I should immediately go about remedying. Also, it should be a piece of cake to do so, right? Aha, I remember that. Now that, that I am struck by the obvious on such a subject as this, the doctor is in. Hesitancy or unease on this subject it's a lot of ego, but art for me, art has always been social, reciprocal, and given that I was once upon a time, and so it's still a solid part of me, a theater guy, two degrees in theater, as I always say, it's true. Really, it's for better or worse impossible to dismiss the necessity of an audience. But there's a part of all that, of this, that's, uh, well, the thing not to forget is that clearly I have one, an audience. I mean, not a throng, but a few. Gradual, intermittent, but out there. Thank you very much. <laughs> if you're there. It's in, it's funny and interesting to think of everything as just imaginary or whatever. I don't know. But out there, if such things as internet links and website rankings and traffic statistics are... If that which... Those that tout such things flash in virtual neon as they swim around in the atmosphere is in any way near accurate. No wonder looking at those graphs and lists have boosted my aching, aching spirit. After a, few minute, uh, after a few minutes after sending that out, I received this simple text back. Quote, I wonder how you're going to go about it. End quote. <laughs> my response, well, you know, or maybe not, for most of my years as a writer meaning since I was 29 or 30, which is when poetry took over me as my, and I hate this word in this use, but it is the most appropriate given its general use in such circumstances, passion. I've regularly hosted, quote, salons, not the word I use, by the way, generally. Another word for which in this context I am kind of turned off by 
or poetry sharing soirees, poem swaps is what I called them, which were always a big deal to me since quite a while before I was displaced. That just hasn't happened for mostly obvious reasons, but I think I need to have as a prioritized goal rejiggering and resuming them in some way and rather than spend so much time bitching about having no local friends well there still remain several individuals with whom I spent a lot of time believing that's what they were which has since been such a motivation suck when it comes to rebuilding such a group but I digress because I'm talking now about poets and I never get close enough to other poets for such troubles to occur Anyway, for starters, I think I shall use my texts on this subject to you, that question, and my response, pretty much verbatim as my anachronism for today. That would be a start, I think. That would be a start, I think. I have a, uh, an interview coming up later today. I got That's just my reminder. That would be a start, I think, and a way to sort of force myself to think more on this, which seems like what I should surely do. Thanks. That was that was a little long. Thank you.